Hi, I'm Stu from Hive Mind Automation and welcome to the Hive. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at this Wiz motion sensor. As always, we'll take a look around the outside of the box, get it outside of the box, pair it to the native app, and we'll try to get it paired into a Home Assistant and working, though I don't think that that's going to work. So while I roll the intro, why don't you take a moment to subscribe? And if you hit the bell icon, you'll get notified when I release new videos each week. While you're at it, if you like what I do here and you want to support the channel, there's some affiliate links in the video description to some of the home automation gadgets that I've reviewed in the past and other ways to support the channel like my Buy Me A Coffee link. All of those affiliate links and the Buy Me A Coffee link are also available on my website, hivemindautomation.com.au. With all of that out of the way, let's get started. So we're pretty deep into a bit of a whiz series here. It's pretty unintentional, but here we are. As part of the whiz series, I picked up this whiz motion sensor from Bunnings for $37.94, and I'm interested to see if I'm going to be able to get this sensor into Home Assistant. There's a chance it won't work, and it's a pretty big chance based on the experience that we had with the remotes, but we're gonna find out together. As always, we'll start with a quick look around the outside of the box first. So on the front of the box, we've got Wiz motion sensor, works with all Wiz connected products, a picture of the device and a screenshot of the app there. On the right side, we've got motion detection, three meter range, whole room control, battery powered, automatically turn lights on and off and a serving suggestion there. Uh, on the back, we've got uh, four different uh, indications there, and it says trigger different light modes throughout the day with your sensor. Download it on the App Store, get it on Google Play at whizconnected.com, uh, and the logo and hash connected light there. Uh, and lastly, on the left-hand side, uh, we have motion sensor in different languages, Wiz motion sensor, Wi-Fi connectivity, Wi-Fi certified 2.4 gigahertz, external accessories not included, and uh, the, the patent and copyright details there. Power source is two uh, AA batteries, use alkaline batteries only. Uh, and the measurements there, 62 by 62 millimeters uh, by 28 millimeters deep. On the bottom, we've got the manufacturer details and addresses. It's Signify, the parent company of Philips who make the Philips Hue range of lights and accessories. Uh, so I'm expecting big things, but I'm not going to get them. Uh, and then we've got the compliance details there. Uh, and on the top, uh, we've just got hash connected light and motion sensor. So with the outside of the box covered, let's take a look inside the box and at the unit itself. So we'll open the top of the box here, uh, pull these flaps back, and we've got the unit sitting right on top here. Uh, and Mm, it feels a bit plasticky and not that great, to be honest. The button feels a little bit cheap. Uh, and I can't say that the design is really that compelling either. That's fine. We'll put that aside for now and I'll uh, pull these tabs up. Uh, and uh, so we've got... Inside the box, we've got a wall plate. Uh, so that uh, clips onto the back of the motion sensor there. Uh, we've got our quick setup guide. Uh, and uh, we've got a fairly thick instruction detailing uh, some of the different functions. So it shows us the beam angles. Uh, there's also some settings here on changing the sensitivity. So inside this uh, kind of cardboard holder here, we actually have the batteries uh, are uh, held in there into the box by that, which is kind of a nice touch actually. Um, and there's also the mounting screw for uh, this wall plate here as well, which is nice. Uh, 
Uh, so, uh, looking at the device itself, uh, as I said before, the quality, the build quality feels a little bit cheap, um, which is disappointing, um, but uh, we'll see if it works well. I will uh, unscrew uh, this little screw here in the back, uh, and we should then be able to pop the back plate off, which uh, came off pretty well there. Uh, and we'll insert these batteries. Now, while I do that, I will um, flip it over. And when we get the second battery in, we should see uh, the light will flash. Uh, so we've got a couple of flashes there from the unit itself. I'll just pop the back plate back on and we'll screw the screw back in. Uh, so we've got that set up now. Uh, I'm just going to point it away from me, but with this button uh, facing up, uh, I think we're going to need to press this button when we're pairing the unit itself. Speaking of pairing, let's do that now. Let's get it paired to the native app. And to do that, I'll open up the Wiz V2 app on my phone. I'm on my home here, and I'm going to tap the plus button in the top right hand corner. It's looking for devices via Bluetooth. It's not going to find any devices via Bluetooth, but I'll tap on motion sensor down here in the list. I'm adding it to the test room and it says insert the batteries in the sensor and wait around 30 seconds while we get the server ready and then we can tap on start. I think it's been about 30 seconds since we put the batteries in. So I'll tap on start there. And it's now got a 60 second countdown. Make sure the sensor has power and press the button on its side. So I will press that button and hopefully now we've got pairing its accessory found and we've got a tick that says done uh, and we've got the device in there. So if I go to settings and then to accessories, we've got the Wi-Fi motion sensor and we can drill in there and we can see uh, some of the different settings available to us. So we've got phase one in here and we can add multiple phases if we wanted to. Um, so we can have a phase that uh, sits between specific times of the day. So uh, in this example, 12.01 to 12.11 a.m. I'm just gonna delete that phase and we'll work just with the 24 hour phase. Uh, but you can see we can have an action when motion is detected and it can be on, it can be warm white, it can be daylight. We can do all sorts of things and we can even set the specific brightness that we want there. I might just uh, leave that as on. In fact, let's make that warm white at 100% and I'll save that. And it's applying it to the whole room, which is mm, not ideal, but it's fine. Uh, and then we've got the action when there is no motion. So we've got a delay of five minutes there. And uh, that is uh, from the switch that is inside the unit. If we go in here, we can see no motion detected. We can actually choose a different scene rather than just turning it off. Uh, off would be the obvious one if there's no motion detected, uh, but you could just maybe turn it into a nightlight, for example. There's this delay here and we can change that. That's just going to set how long uh, it waits until uh, it will run that action. Um, and then the other thing that we'll see here in phase one is advanced. Um, so we can also have a manual override delay. And that means that if the lights have been manually controlled, they will temporarily stop reacting to the sensors for the duration that you specify. For example, if the delay is five minutes and you use the app to turn off the light, the sensor will not turn it back on for five minutes, even if you move in front of it. The unit is paired. Um, the light is currently on and it's on a cool white setting. I'm going to move in front of the sensor here and see if that changes the light setting. I'm trying to move the full sensor here and it's not really doing anything at all. So it kind of doesn't seem to be doing anything it's not responding to motion at all, which doesn't really bode well for this sensor. I might just wait to see if it turns off after five minutes. While we're doing that though, so it's currently 1.55 and 11 seconds. So if uh, at two o'clock and 55 seconds, it hasn't done anything, I'm uh, gonna call this thing dead. 
But while we're waiting for that, I'm going to open up land scan on my computer here and I'll run a quick land scan and see if I can see anything that looks like it might be the whiz. Yeah, so that's a smart plug that I'm testing in a different video. Um, and that's the candlelight that we've got here on the B camera. So it doesn't show up in the Wi-Fi, which doesn't bode well. We've still got about four minutes before I'm going to um, call it dead as, as in it's not actually updating the light condition here. So while we're waiting for that, I'll head over to Home Assistant. I'll go to Settings, Devices and Services, and I'm going to scroll down uh, and I'll tap uh, Add Device. We'll go to, uh, we'll search for Wiz. I'll click on Wiz. It's asking us uh, to put in the IP address, but if we leave the IP address empty, Discovery will be used to find devices. So I'll tap Submit and see no devices found on the network. So much like the remotes, um, the uh, motion sensor is not going to work with Home Assistant, which is disappointing to say the least. Uh, we've still got three more minutes actually to uh, see whether or not this is going to update the app. So uh, I will wait for those three minutes and uh, we'll give you an update in a moment. Uh, so with only about a minute remaining, I have had the thought that maybe I am needing to look for something like a um, an update, perhaps. What's Wiz Advisor? Um, no. I mean, I would expect an update to be available in here, so it's not looking good. Security, allow local communication. That's kind of what I need, but it's not helping me at all. There's help center and tutorial videos. Hmm. Not really seeing anything that's actually going to be helpful at all. I mean, even in the room settings, we've just got our favorite modes. I'm seeing nothing in the app at all that we can use to update the um, the accessory. So um, it's kind of a problem. We've just clocked over that five minute period where it's not it's not turned the light off and I'm moving in front of it and it's not changing the setting of the light. So it doesn't actually work. It doesn't even work with the native app, which is a problem. So that's the Wiz motion sensor at $37.94 and that's with my trade discount. I really can't say that it's value for money because it doesn't even work with the native app. And a Cara Zigbee motion sensor is 22 bucks from AliExpress. And then you would just need to add a Zigbee bridge. And then you would just need to add a Zigbee bridge, which while it's additional cost, uh, by the time you add four or five sensors, you're already ahead. Zigbee sensors also have the added benefit of not adding additional load to your Wi-Fi network. And as I've mentioned in the past, I've had some trouble with 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi here on my network. Hello, Whiskey Cat. The build quality of this thing is not great. It doesn't seem to even work with the native app and it's nearly 40 bucks for a sensor. It's a very bad experience. I will 100% be returning this to Bunnings for my money back. I expected more from Signify, which is the parent company of Philips. I wanted to like this unit, but unfortunately it's given me absolutely zero reason to like it. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments section down below. That's all we have for this video and I do hope that it helped you in your home automation journey. Be sure to comment down below with a home automation idea you'd like to see me cover in a future video. Don't forget to also follow Hivemind Automation on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button down below to give it a like. And if you're not already subscribed, please consider subscribing now. While you're at it, if you hit the bell icon, you'll get notified when I release new videos each week. Lastly, if you like what I'm doing here and you want to help to support the channel, there's a buy me a coffee link in the video description. Any contribution you make through Buy Me A Coffee gets put towards making more and hopefully better content for you to enjoy. Affiliate links to gadgets and also my Buy Me A Coffee link are also available on my website, hivemindautomation.com.au. 
Thanks so much for watching. I'm Stu from Hive Mind Automation and I'm looking forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.